Hi friends, welcome to Ofa Studies YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about Apache Spark in Microsoft Fabric. Okay, so this is continuation to the Fabric playlist. We have discussed about lake houses in previous video. Now Spark part we will discuss. This video mostly looks like a theory part, but listen to it. This is very important to get a better idea to work in a real time. So what is Apache Spark? Basically, it's a open source framework that will help you to do data processing, especially big data if you have and you want to process that data, right? Apache Spark is a best tool or a software which is available and it's a open source. And this Spark is available in Microsoft Fabric and Fabric uses this Apache Spark to do the data processing. Uh, if you have know about the Databricks, in the Databricks also, Spark is the one which will get used, okay? And the Spark in Microsoft Fabric actually it was together used with the analytic services like lake hoses and notebooks and the pipelines. We know what is lake hoses, right? So similarly, we have something called notebooks uh, where you write, a, imagine like you write some code that will do the data processing. So that notebooks will work with the Spark. Also, we have a pipelines, even like ADF pipelines, data factory pipelines, even that pipelines will work with the Spark. We haven't discussed about notebooks and pipelines yet. We will discuss in our upcoming videos. So now how this Spark actually work is, it will work like a divide and conquer approach. What that means is, if you give a large amount of data to it, right, it will distribute the data into a different, different sets and it will try to execute that sets. So if you give thousand rows, all thousand rows, it will not execute at a time. It will distribute and then execute it. Okay, and in Spark, right, whenever you, you want to write that logic, right, uh, whatever, maybe a join logic, maybe a where filter logic to filter the certain rows. So whatever you do it, right, you can write all that code in a different languages. You can write a Java code, Scala code, R language, SQL, even Python using a PySpark libraries. So in variety of the languages, you can write the code. Uh, it is not limit you to only write in a Scala or a Java. R, R language or a SQL language. You can write your data processing logic in the comfortable languages which are available here. Okay. And in Fabric, there is something called Spark Pools. So what is Spark Pool means? So for example, in Databricks, right, you will be have something called um, clusters. Okay. So in Databricks, you will be having something called cluster. So cluster is like a, imagine like a, some system or a dedicated systems given to you and directly these clusters will work with your code which is written in a notebooks and it will run it. But here there is no dedicated thing, there is something called pool concept. So that means whenever you have any workspace, automatically one pool will come. We will discuss that in, in just a while. So how these pools work is, pools basically contains the compute nodes. That means lot of compute, lot of computers spark in it. Imagine that way. So lot of compute node is already available. Whenever a request goes to the pool, then it will give you that compute to you from the pool and you, your code will run on that compute. So when I say compute, on the compute you will have spark. Okay. So now the spark pool actually, the, the, the architecture looks something like this. You will have like this is also a computer imagine that way or a computer uh, or a compute even this one all is also like a compute imagine that way so now you will have this kind of a thing architecture like a head node and also a worker nodes head node is nothing but like a driver program like it's like a driver that will divide the task divide the data and give to the worker nodes to execute it so once the data get divided worker nodes take that load and actually execute the data processing logic there okay so that is how it will work and uh, where to create, I mean, how these Spark pools are available in Microsoft Fabric, how it will look like, uh, where it will be available. Let's see that. So when you go to the workspace, so here I have a workspace called Mahir workspace, which I, I already created it. So you need to go to the workspace settings. So when you hit the workspace settings here, you need to go to the data engineering here and you need to select this uh, Spark settings. So when you click that spark settings here, uh, this is where you will see the pools. Now, if I zoom this right under spark settings, you see there is a pool called starter pool, which automatically came. So whenever you have a workspace, automatically a starter pool will get created and that will be automatically available for you. Okay. And this pool has this configuration, node family, 
node size number of nodes so you can create your own pool as well there okay and we will discuss about these settings also now so to create a your own pool right you can hit this drop down and you can choose this new pool option to create a new pool okay so but ideal case we no need to create any new pool we can go ahead with the starter pool and here you see this node family node size number of node settings what that means is let me open that so if you if you clearly see it here right you you see something called uh, this node contains memory optimized node family or this pool contains so what is memory optimized node family means this is like for example you no need to worry about how the memory is getting used when the data processing is happening when you go with this option so memory optimized option will automatically take care of executing your queries in a best performance way and uh, you have something called auto scale for example if you want to make the spark automatically take a decision or fabric to automatically take a decision how many nodes to use how much compute to use then you can define this and here it will ask you to give the minimum and maximum number of nodes so minimum one node maximum 10 nodes it will use okay and you can adjust that settings as well and you have something called dynamic allocate executors what that means is each worker node will have the execution uh, 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 engines on top of it so even that executions the dynamic allocation will happen that execution engines will our executors will be dynamically get allocated there okay on top of the worker nodes okay so these are all the basic settings of the uh, nodes okay and when i go back to uh, my screen so the same thing as discussed here and there is something called runtimes also in spark so what is runtime means so i said a spark pool will be there and inside a spark pool you will have the compute and with the spark installed there automatically right now when i say spark installed spark has a various versions okay that is called spark runtime versions so if i go back to here and when you go to this environment tab here and you see there is something called runtime version and you see that right now runtime version 1.3 is selected now when I click this drop down, you see various other runtime versions as well. You can use the whatever the runtime which best suits for you. So when I say Spark runtime, Spark actually contains multiple things inside of it. Uh, it will contain actual Spark, what version of the Spark there and what version of the Delta framework is there. If you see the screenshot right now, I mean, or, or the image right now, see you have a Delta, Delta version 2.4. Here you have a Delta version 3.2 and also what version of python is there so a runtime a spark runtime is a combination of a spark delta python and other various important software everything put together is a compute so when i say compute so let me type this so, so when, I, when i say compute right uh, when i say compute basically i am compute is nothing but like a spark runtime okay spark runtime okay and then in the spark runtime you will have spark you will have python you will have delta and other important softwares also will be there okay so all these things put together is called runtime or a computer compute okay so you have various runtimes available inside the spark pool you can choose the runtime which is best suit for your business logic or the workload okay so let's go back to our one note here now there is something called environments also in microsoft fabric so what is environment mean is basically like you are directly using a pool which given by the Microsoft family, fabric, right? Now, you let's assume you don't want that directly given pools. You wanted to create your own environment where your logic to run, uh, your code to run for the data processing. In such cases, we have to create an environment. We can create something called custom environment. Inside the custom environment, I can specify what runtime to use, what libraries. Let's assume runtime is not enough. On top of that, I wanted to use maybe pandas library or something i can install that right even in the spark pool i can do that or in the custom environments i can do that so i can have my own libraries configurations everything so creating your own environment uh, maybe for a certain notebooks to run maybe a different environment for other notebooks to run so you can create your own environment inside that you will have a your own runtime spark runtime whatever you want and uh, libraries and custom configurations everything so where to create these runtimes is when you go here uh, when you click the, when you this when you when you set this default option off you you need to select this new environment button when you click that it will ask you to create a new environment i will say like a new env and i will hit create so this creates the new environment and once the environment get create you can clearly observe it here the new environment opened in a 
new tab here and my workspace tab is here so now inside this new environment you can clearly sense that i have the runtime selection option so i can select the runtime here right and also i can use some libraries so i have written my own python code to create a library or i downloaded some library from internet so i wanted to upload that and use that library as part of my code logic i can do that uh, i can i can do lot of other settings here uh, for some spark properties so many things i can do so it's our own environment okay so going back to our one note now there is something called native execution engine as well so what is this native execution engine so native execution engine is nothing but like a basically i said head node or a driver node then the worker nodes worker nodes will have execution engines to execute your task so there is something called native execution engine is in the fabric which is vectorized processing engine and this engine is actually uh, best suited for the performance when you are running the queries there okay so when you are running the queries it is best suited actually okay uh, why because this directly runs the operations on the lake host infrastructure and lake host infrastructure is something inbuilt available in a system so that will be more beneficiary okay so the native execution engine to use will always guarantee you a better performance and a optimized way of running the queries you just need to enable that native execution engine settings so you can enable that at an environment level as well which i discussed under some settings under properties also at a notebook level so when you are enabling that at a notebook level you just need to make sure to give this json there so configuration then spark native enabled true and then spark shuffle manager then set this value columnar shuffle manager when you set these configurations for the spark then it will enable the native execution engine that will execute your operations directly on a lake house infrastructure and that guarantees you a better performance for running the queries okay and also there is something called high concurrency mode so what is the high concurrency mode is uh, basically when you whenever you are running code using a spark spark will actually create a spark sessions okay now if i run code it will create one session if another person on a notebook uh, on a same workspace running one more session so one more session if 10 people are working 10 sessions but that will be a overload on a pool and you will see a very less performance so if you enable this high concurrency mode even that will guarantee you a better performance because a single session will get used between a uh, across the users or across the notebooks so how to enable that is if you go here uh, let me go back to my workspace and when I go back to my workspace just now we created a environment right see that environment item is available here uh, that's fine let's go back to workspace settings data engineering spark settings and when I go to the high concurrency if you can see I enabled the high concurrency for notebooks right so when I enabled that what it will do if 10 users or 10 notebooks are running they will try to share the same session it won't create a new new sessions always so that way it is very beneficiary uh, in terms of the performance okay so we have discussed a lot of these settings and everything all these settings are working at a workspace level but uh, these settings can be managed at administrator level as well so that means the whole microsoft fabric comes for the entire organization right so at an organization level if somebody if the fabric administrator set these configurations at an organization level then whatever you define inside the workspace doesn't matter the top level settings will override them okay so only spark administrator can do that at an entire fabric capacity level uh, but that is not scope of this video uh, we will discuss maybe when we discuss about the administration part of the fabric we will discuss this kind of a this side of the story so i hope you got an idea uh, i hope you enjoyed this video like how the spark is getting used in fabric and we will try to see little practical also from my next video we will try to run some code and see how the spark can be used along with the notebooks and etc so i hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching have a nice day see you